The struggle for, or should I say the struggle against corporatized global trade deals has entered a new and somewhat hallucinogenic phase. This is me speaking personally, of course. Uh, when it comes to uh, the Trump administration and its efforts to renegotiate uh, said deals because uh, we all know that Trump is, uh, again, in my personal opinion, a god-awful train wreck of a president and as a human being. And yet, could it possibly be, is there the remotest possibility that there might be some sort of forward progress in the world of global trade under a Donald Trump administration. Here to help us make sense of the maze we find ourselves in is Lori Wallach. Uh, I'm delighted to have her on the program. She is the director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch, and she is, in my opinion, the person to ask about global trade and about issues related to it. So uh, she's been in involved in this fight for quite a while and she joins us now so first of all Lori, thanks so much for coming on the program thank you uh secondly um okay so uh the the trump administration is in the midst of uh renegotiating nafta is that correct they started last august and hallucinogenic is a very um apt if not previously heard by me, description of the situation. I sometimes call it Alice in Wonderland because it comes to pass that the guy who is the chief trade negotiator, it's a cabinet level job, is a guy who has worked for years with US unions to, and has relationships with Democrats in Congress and who has been a longstanding opponent of some of the very parts of NAFTA, the changing of which have been the core demands of unions, groups like ours, public citizen, environmental groups, and progressives in Congress. So the only reason why this anti-labor, anti-working people, corporate stuffed administration actually is kind of barking up the right tree on NAFTA renegotiation is because this particular guy has a very wide lane for a president who does not know his elbow from his ear on the details of trade to try and fix NAFTA. And this guy's idea of how to fix it is not that dissimilar from ours. So, I mean, there's probably some folksy uh, expression that would cover this, even a blind dog finds a truffle now and then or whatever. But the point is this, the point is that uh, Trump appointed, I think you're, you're referring to Stephen Lighthizer, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Robert. Robert, Robert Lighthizer. Lighthizer, thank you. Um, but, but he appointed somebody who's been pretty good on this issue in the past. I guess the uncertainty comes, and one could speculate uh, you know, forever about how that came to pass, but I suppose the uncertainty would come to mind. And, and you're an expert in global trade, not in the Byzantine word, world of Trump's White House, but I would assume the uncertainty would come in from the fact that there are other people in this administration who, uh, as well as the Republican Party as a whole, who have been fierce advocates for the kind of pro-corporate uh, trade regime we've had up till now. Is that right? So there's probably some behind the scenes jockeying or struggling for power or something like that? So that is totally true. And what has happened to date has been an epic battle about whether we're going to just double down with the corporate rig status quo of trade agreements and the NAFTA renegotiation be kind of like TPP 2.0. That's certainly where people like Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross want to go. Or Lighthizer's vision, and this is where the overlap is with us, is you have to cut out all of the incentives stuck into NAFTA to outsource American jobs. So that's investor protections that make it cheaper, cheaper and less risky to outsource. That's a ban on Buy American procurement. So companies like a GE that gets billions of dollars of government contracts can now make the stuff in Mexico and does for less than $2 an hour paying workers versus what used to be union jobs in the U.S. and Massachusetts, other parts of the country, for that exact same generator, air conditioner, jet engine. And 
also at the core of NAFTA that we think should come out, and so does the top negotiator, Lighthizer, are those investor state tribunals. Those outrageous corporate tribunals where multinational companies are empowered to attack our governments, skirting our courts, and instead of having three corporate lawyers award unlimited damages if these companies claim that their special NAFTA investor rights are threatened by a U.S. environmental law or consumer regulation, even a court ruling. So that stuff has to come out. And then strong environmental and labor standards with swift and certain enforcement have to go in to raise wages, because that's a pull factor for outsourcing. But also, we've seen a half a billion dollars paid out to these corporations in attacks on tax expands, water, timber policies, energy policies. That has to stop, just like the continuing outsourcing. So if Lighthizer gets that, ironically, as you have hinted, there are going to be a bunch of people in the White House and the other parts of the White House who are not happy. The Chamber of Commerce is not going to be happy. And a bunch of Republicans in Congress might vote no, while perversely, some progressives in Congress, Democrats, plus unions could be for it, because it is kind of the core agenda. Now, just to close, and you're where you started, at any moment, Trump could just pull the rug out from under the entire good thing. So until we see tax, we're not going to know. But there could be an announcement of a deal in principle as soon as next week. Well, that's fascinating. Oh, that's fascinating. Oops. Uh, well, well, we had a little feedback there. Well, that's fascinating. And I think uh, for a variety of reasons, I want to unpack some of those issues that you mentioned, because I, I, I think they're very, very important for people to understand what precisely we're talking about here. But before we go into that and unpack and just note on the politics of it, and you and I have, have talked about this, but before Lori Wallach, we, we did an interview for Free Speech TV where it came up. But my biggest concern is that in the nationwide resistance to Donald Trump, which all in all I think is a very healthy and necessary thing, uh, the f I'm concerned that that resistance will extend to some people reflexively finding themselves wanting to defend a global trade um, status quo that is not in their interests, or for that matter, in the interests of working people in other countries as well. And I'm very concerned that that not happens. So uh, any thoughts about that? Well, that's certainly one reason I really appreciate this opportunity to be on your show. Because for progressives, it is incredibly important that despite what is a well-founded, reflexive revulsion about Trump and anything he touches, if the right kind of NAFTA replacement deal comes out, that groups like Public Citizen and that the labor movement supports and that progressives in Congress support, and we're going to dig through it carefully, because this is not something we're doing as a favor, <laughs> certainly. It has to be the perfect thing that despite Trump, it's the right policy. If that comes out, then we as progressives need to make crystal clear in how we talk about that and how we tell people about that. If it comes to it and how we fight to enact that, that the choices are not neoliberalism, NAFTA, TPP, the race to the bottom, corporate power, rigged agreements, or the nationalism, racism, and hateful xenophobia that Donald Trump tries to make the answer to a status quo that has been devastating because his frame of this being about the U.S. being hurt by Mexico is just totally off base. As a recovering trade agreement, a, a, a recovering trade attorney, there is an agreement. It is 900 pages. The U.S. foisted most of it on Mexico. Our corporations, in cahoots with a couple of the biggest corporations, mining and others, banks from Canada, some of the biggest conglomerates from Mexico, all these elites got together and pushed these rig rules that have screwed working people throughout North America and trashed the environment. I mean, just think of Mexico under NAFTA. More than 2 million family, farm, family farmers have been displaced. And basically, there are fewer manufacturing jobs net in Mexico. A lot of the U.S. ones came, stayed 10 years, went to China. Real wages in Mexico are down considerably since NAFTA. So what we need is to replace the corporate rigged rules. It's not us versus 
them, as in U.S. versus Mexico. It's working people versus the concentrated corporate power that is these agreements. And our internationalist progressive alternative that puts people and planet first if some small piece of it, like a confused unicorn, wanders out of the dark woods of Trump land, let us carefully get the unicorn safely someplace, because we'll have made historic improvements. Let's get the... It's a trade agreement model that is currently doing ongoing damage. Let's get that unicorn away from the scary people. Um and where we can take care of it. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's such a great point that, uh, you know, so many people uh, who defend this system, which is really the corporations of the world against, as you say, against the working people of all of North America, so many people uh, say, well, you know, you want to close the borders, you, you, you only care about the United States. It's, it's selfish as if somehow the workers of the United States are responsible for offsetting uh, the inequality and greed of large corporations and should the sacrifice to do so. And it's not even true. I mean, I think that's what you're telling us, Lori Wallach, that in, in fact, it, it, it's not about benefiting U.S. workers by depriving Mexican workers in this case. It's about making sure that working people in both countries ultimately are better off. It's about making sure the environment in both countries is healthier and safer for the people who live there and for that matter for the world as a whole. So we're talking about getting on the same side of the issue, which means rejecting the framing and not getting, making sure, in my estimation, that, the, that nobody, not the Democrats or anyone, uh, that we would ally with uh, becomes the party of the status quo, because that's also a losing equation politically. Um, and, and when we talk Let's about this... Let me give you these... an example. Let me give you an okay, example of sure. exactly what you just said. So one of the things that could make this deal worth fighting for, which is something the unions in the U.S., working with the unions in Mexico, have pushed and maybe have just, just almost gotten done, is a special set of requirements for independent, secret ballot, union elections, and union contract approvals in Mexico. Right now in Mexico, how the hell is it possible that wages are lower than they were before NAFTA when they were pathetic? How can it be a worker goes into a brand new high tech plant where in the US the workers are being paid $20 an hour and they get paid buck 50 because of what are called protection unions. These are fake unions that get set up and make a contract for low wages before the first worker even walks into the plant. And then the workers come in and say, what do you mean I'm being paid not enough to feed my family working ridiculous hours? I'm going on strike. And they'll get arrested and beaten up because why? They're breaking the contract they never approved. So there is this clause being worked on that would require all of those protection unions to be revoted. The fight now is between, is it in two years or is it in four years? With these private, with these secret ballot elections, i.e. a transformation of labor rights in Mexico. Like, if that is really in there, that is worth fighting for. It would transform the possibility of our brothers and sisters in Mexico to actually fight to improve their wages and to improve their working conditions. Would it be good for workers in the U.S. to have the floor of standards in Mexico brought up? Yes, of course, because the competition is not raced to the bottom. The wages would still be lower, but there's a chance to equalize. If that's in there, that's amazing. If, if, if. If, 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 if we get this administration, I guess you're quizzing me, if, if we get this administration to do the right thing, and, and by the way, the other provisions we're talking about, you mentioned the, uh, the so-called ISDS, the, uh, the idea that government uh, sovereignty, including our own, can be overridden by any corporation that wants to demand extorbit, wants to really extort exorbitant amounts of money from, uh, from our government or a state government or anyone else for an environmental protection law, for keeping, t uh, for keeping mercury out of tuna, whatever the case may be. So there's that provision to be dealt with. There's the labor organization provisions and these trade deals are, are, are full of, uh, well, look, in, in some countries, labor leaders are still being murdered uh, and uh, the trade deals have done nothing to protect them. There's child uh, slave labor, the fact that the last administration chose to ignore the existence of, of child labor in Malaysia and so on. So uh, we could talk, uh, you know, 
indefinitely, it seems, about the reasons why these deals need to change. But Lori Wallach, uh, um, director of uh, Public Citizens Global Trade Watch, uh, any closing thoughts for us? Well, it's super important that progressives actually are in this conversation and making clear the choice is not a binary one between the status quo of neoliberalism and Trump's nationalism. So I really urge folks to get informed. If you go to our website, tradewatch.org, www.tradewatch.org, you can look at the data to test where exactly are these million NAFTA job losses vis-a-vis -vis your community or your employer. You can go into a database that we have that you can actually look at the certified million NAFTA job losses. Plus, there are great fact sheets there about what exactly has happened with wage inequality, what's happening in Mexico under NAFTA, the whole summary of those horrible investor state cases. If you want to get involved campaigning-wise and you want the urgent update so you know if a deal has been made immediately, please sign up another website at replacenafta.org. That's www.replacenafta.org. This is all going to be happening now, between now and the end of August. So if you want to stay on top of it, please sign up and get in the fight. Well, uh, I can't add anything to that except uh, Lori Wallach. Thanks for all your great work on this topic, and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.